in the class and the services I've been about a walking time bomb. A walking time bomb is a minister who has a good calling. The enemy doesn't take him out in the very beginning. The enemy knows that he's living a double lifestyle. The enemy knows he's got lust or other strongholds that he doesn't deal with. Even a drug addiction that he's mm. hiding from folks. Wow. What the enemy will do for cause and effect, for cause and effect, he mm. will allow that man to think just because God moved during a conference that he's okay in his personal walk. Ooh. Man, God, Ooh. What, what happens in a conference doesn't validate who you are in your private life. Come on. So Ooh. that preacher will use that as a validation and keep skirting across the line, doing perverse things. My God. Doing sin and think it's hid. He's a walking time bomb. And My after goodness. that preacher gets to a level of notoriety, the demons that are in him, and he got demons of lust, they My will Lord. rise up openly expose him, hurt mm. somebody in the church, cause collateral damage, and many people fall away from God. Now you can say all you want to, they should have been following God instead of man. The man, let me tell you something. People are on different levels. That's we right. as leaders are responsible for our actions, not only to God, but to the people who God allows us to preach to, to yes, minister sir. to. That's good. I've seen more than one time, man of God, down through my 40 years, mm -hmm. I've seen preachers explode. Preacher found dead in a hotel, drug my overdose. Lord. My Lord. And they knew he had that drug overdose. Can I share a testimony I actually had? Go that, for that it. I was preaching in a particular state one time. Now, I, I pre ministering like I'm doing here, mm -hmm. I made an example of a thing in a garage. In a, I said, Pastor, that'd be just like you had this particular thing in your garage and your wife and you had issues over it. I noticed when I said that, I was only using the example, the word of knowledge. The place got a little quiet, so I kept on preaching. At the end of the service, the Holy Ghost said to me, I want you to go to my servant. And God called him my servant and tell him, that if he leaves that woman alone, that he's seen, that I will heal his marriage. Wow. I said, the blood of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you. I, I, I bind you. No, I couldn't. <laughs> I went to another noted preacher that was with me. Mm -hmm. I said, this is crazy. I said, I felt the Holy Spirit just tell me to go give a message to pastor and I told the other preacher, and the other preacher said, God told you to talk to him. You'll be the one to do it. And I, I agree with the pastor, the other minister. He told me, didn't tell that other minister, told me. I go in the pastor's office. I said, sir, could, could, I, could I speak to you? His wife was leaning on the cabinet, stepping back, leaning against it. Mm -hmm. I said, sir, um... I said, sir, I want you to judge what I'm getting ready to say, because I said... I said, because I don't think I'm always right. I said, but I have to tell you something that I felt the Lord said to me. And if I'm wrong, I receive correction, sir. Mm -hmm. I would never disagree. And you know what the man of God turned around and said to me? He said, look, I'm a good judge of character. He said, he said, Brother Hopkins, Pastor Hopkins, you're not that guy. Just tell me what God is saying. I looked mm. at his wife. I said, you sure you want me to sit it here? He said, go on, say it. Wow. I said, um, <laughs> sir, God said that if you let that other woman go, he'll heal your marriage. The wife leaned up off of the cabinet with tears coming down her eyes. She said, I told you that God wasn't going to let that stay hid. Wow. And that whatever, I'm not going to name what it was, but that that you had in that garage, he was preaching and even God showed him that. Mm. And I looked at him with tears coming down my eyes. I said, man of God, I'm sorry. He said, you have nothing to be sorry for. What you told mm. me was the truth. I said, man of God, please listen to God. I said, it's no way I could have known this. Now, we don't pat Ivory on the back because he got a word of knowledge or, right. or because God gave him a revelation. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm trying to tell you, we ministers, we, we, we ministers need to wake up and yes, understand sir. that there are spirits that wants us doing immorality, that wants us hooked on some drug so it can destroy us, our family, and many others. These demons Man. ain't playing, brother. They're not joking. They're not. They're and not. even as I do your broadcast right here, there mm -hmm. is preachers sitting out there. You are skirting the line. You oh. have a name and a notoriety. Please repent, my brother, my sister. Please, please repent. Because the demons that you are allowing to use your life, they will eventually pull the carpet on you. And not only worry about the demons, God will. Yes, sir. Please hear me. Yes, sir. This is why. We need to need deliverance. Some preachers, the reason why a lot of preachers aren't getting delivered, because they know they got strongholds, but sometimes their pride and their liking what they're doing is hmm, Say that again. Say free. that again, Apostle. Say that again. Their pride and liking what they're doing. Hmm. Let me tell you something, man of God. I don't care what your title is. At the end of the day, there's no title that gives you an exemption for moral accountability. That's There's good. no title, whether it's me or you. Nothing mm -hmm. gives us a pass from God being sovereign. We have yes, to be sir. careful. And be very careful, you that are listening to me, who are clapping your hands at what I'm saying. Because at the end of the day, the Bible said, ye that are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness. That's it. So anyway, but that's, that's why, I, why I believe and feel that the enemy has had preachers and churches hide deliverance because mm -hmm. the preacher is bound up. 